Hey everyone, welcome to our group starter series. My name is Matt Kuhlman and I'm the group's pastor. And I'm Chantel Van Dyke, the group's coordinator. We're so happy that you're taking those next steps to get involved with groups. We truly believe that transformation happens when we surround ourselves with other believers who will encourage us, support us, and lift us up in prayer before the Lord. We hope that this will become a place where you can be authentic and do life together. We're so excited for you guys to dive in. Oh man, Chantel's right on. I cannot wait for the next uh, three weeks for you guys. Uh, maybe you're a group that has uh, met for years already. Um, take the next next three weeks to really reestablish your group and figure out expectations and get back on track maybe with what you're hoping to get out of a group. And maybe uh, you're looking around the room and you're thinking, I don't know any of these people. You're brand new and jumping right into it. Uh, take the next three weeks to really get to know each other, get to know their story, and talk about what your hopes and dreams for coming out of this group. We can't wait to see how God moves in the relationships that are formed through these groups. So let's get started. Think back to your school days. Do you remember that first day of school, syllabus day? It was so exciting to go through page after page with no. your teacher of all of the materials that you'll read and the things that you'll accomplish. Wasn't it exciting? Those are the worst days for me. I, I opened the syllabus on the last week of class to figure out what I still had to do before the class ended to pass it. Well, for some people, this day was very exciting. And for others, it might have been overwhelming. The first day of starter series is going to feel a little bit like that. We're going to be throwing a lot of information at you, but hang tight with us. We promise it'll be worth it. I want you to think back to your first job. What do you remember about it? For me, it was a hostess at a local restaurant. And I remember thinking I really should have become a server because they get tips. Oh, what a big deal. <laughs> for me, um, I really challenged myself and I started at a horse farm where I was the manure boy. I literally would scoop horse manure for the day. That, that was my first job. And it helped me realize I, I didn't want to do that forever. So uh, think back to your first job. What was it and what do you remember most about it? If you could be successful at any career, let your imagination wander, what would we find you doing? If you could borrow anything on this earth for one day from anybody, what would you borrow? At the Foundry, we have a weekly rhythm that was designed to establish our deep roots in God's word, worship, and a faith community. We reflect on weekly devotions as we prepare our hearts to receive the message during services. We gather together in corporate worship to hear the word of God and to lift our voices in praise together. And we join a faith community that meets weekly to discuss the scripture, devotions, and how the Holy Spirit is meeting us right where we're at. And that's what you're doing right now. You're gathering in a group. And we found those three things to be highly important and values here at the Foundry because of a specific scripture passage that comes out of Psalm 1, 1 through 3. And it says this, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. See, out of this, it is so important to realize that we gather together so that we are surrounded by a community of believers who can hold us accountable to being con to continue to be transformed more and more into the image of Christ. So now that we have an idea of why this is important and why we're gonna be doing this, let's take a little bit of a closer look at your group specifically. Have any of you ever made a dating profile online? No. We we're just <laughs> laughing. Chantel hasn't because she's too old to have made a dating profile online. Not entirely true. 
Hey, I uh, had an experience where when my brother-in-law was single, um, there was a time where for Christmas, I made a dating profile for him, a surprise dating profile. So at Christmas, he opened up his present from Santa, I think I addressed it from, and it was a profile from Farmers Only, and I had so much fun creating it for him. How thoughtful. He was embarrassed and traumatized, but it was great. But the dating profiles do work. I, I know a lot of friends who have had great success with them. And I think it's really because you make it very clear in that profile what the expectations are and what you're looking for in a relationship. In the same way, when we talk about groups, we want to have those conversations. What are you guys looking for? What are you hoping to get out of this? And are there things you want to be held accountable in some ways? Um, as we have some of these conversations, I want to remind you to be as honest as you possibly can, uh, because this is a time that um, we can grow in our faith together as long as we know each other's stories. Also. So be honest where you're at and uh, figure out what expectations you're looking for. So let's take a closer look at some of these questions. So let's get down to business. Let's think to the very beginning. Why did you sign up for groups? What are you hoping to get out of groups? Maybe you're looking to go deeper in your faith, or maybe you need accountability in a certain area of your life. Maybe you're looking to surround your children with awesome role models and fellow believers. Why don't we start by taking out maybe a big piece of white uh, paper or a whiteboard, and let's start jotting some things down. I hope you guys have had a chance to take a look at um, some of the similarities and some of the things that you want. Oh, would you mind if I take that? Thank you. Some of the things that you guys have in common when you look at expectations and things that you want out of your group. Like for example, for this group, like the fridge is always open and don't not come in. There's a value in having an open house where this home is their home. And I think when it, that may not be your thing, but when you look at this, understand that there's gonna be some things that should be goals, goals that you accomplish maybe every week. And maybe there's a goal that you want to, as a group, accomplish over the course of the year. When we look at our goals, we need to understand that they can't be just things that are on here. If we really value them as a group, we need to be pretty intentional about making those things happen and figuring out what is it gonna to take to make that goal take place. So make sure that you're able to identify as a group the goals that you want to achieve and maybe set up some steps to make those happen. And it might be helpful to identify any roadblocks or obstacles that may prevent you from achieving those goals. One of the keys about making a group a success is by making it a priority in your life. By making something a priority, you will have to sacrifice in other areas of your life. Let's face it, time is valuable and our lives are so busy. There are kids sporting events, date nights, time at the gym, family time, and just time to rest. But if you really evaluate and look at how you're spending your time, I bet you can find different ways that you could fit in a group. For Chantel, that means cutting out Jeopardy every night in her life. And for Matt, that means cutting out Golden Girls. All right, well, I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> when we look at things in our lives, there are opportunity costs to everything. Even not taking an opportunity is a cost in and of itself. Um, when we look at our time, we really need to see what do we prioritize and what do we value. Um, there is a cost to this. Hear me when I say that. Meeting every week or some of us bi-weekly, there's a lot of time that gets put into this, but I believe that it matters and it will be beneficial in your life. When I think about doing 100 push-ups, I wanna cry because there's not a chance I could 
do maybe five or 10, right? But over time, if I put in the work, if I put in the energy, I could do 100 push-ups. I think, right? I think I could make that happen. But that's how we want us to view our groups. It may take some time, it may take some energy in your life, but over the long run, it is gonna be so good and so beneficial for you. We know it sounds like joining a group means so much sacrifice, but really you gain so much from that community as well. And one huge and essential part is care. So we're going to introduce Allison Elders, our care coordinator, to talk a little bit more about care in groups. Um, but before we jump into what care looks like specifically for groups, um, one thing I want to hit on is the app. And if you've been coming to the Foundry, you're probably familiar with it, maybe checking in at church um, or checking your kids in upstairs. Uh, one thing we want to do um, over the course of the next few years is really utilize this app for groups. You're going to be able to find content on it, um, but you will also see the leaders uh, taking attendance. And I promise you, we're not uh, selling your information to anyone or anything. Uh, we want to utilize the app as a tool uh, to be able to just work with your group closer. One thing we want to be aware of is uh, maybe some of the prayer requests that you guys have as a group or some of the care concerns that you have. We as a group staff and prayer team uh, want to want to have a more direct relationship with you guys as a group so we can care as a whole for the church in that way. But Elson, can you speak to what care could look like in a group specifically? Yeah, absolutely. So the care structure at the Foundry Church, we really feel like the best and most intentional care comes through relationships. So you're building relationships within your group. That's why groups are such a vital part of our care ministry at the Foundry. Um, these are the people that you're going to go through life with. You're going to meet with them and go through groups content, but you're also going to share your day-to-day -day struggles or things that you're maybe facing in work or with your kids or in all the different areas of your life. Um, and so that's why we feel that's, that's such a vital and an important part of, of care. I want you to think about a, a time in your life where you experienced a need for encouragement. Maybe you were just having um, a difficult time in your job. Maybe there was a death in the family or a really difficult diagnosis. Think about how people cared for you during that time. What was life-giving and encouraging to you? Or maybe it was just um, an opportunity that was missed. What would you have liked someone to do for you during that time to give you the encouragement and the care that you needed? Go ahead and talk with your group right now about what intentional care could look like for you. Now that you've had a couple minutes to talk in your group about what intentional care would look like for you, I just wanna encourage you guys to just take this opportunity and as you're developing the relationships, think about ways that you can be the hands and the feet of Jesus to those around you, the people in your group. Maybe that's just even a text message during the week to say, hey, how are you doing this week? Or I know that you're, um, you've had this meeting coming up. Uh, maybe it's a meal or just think of ways that you can intentionally um, be the hands and feet of Jesus with the people around you. One thing that's important to know too when we're looking at groups is you may be looking around now and after going through some of the expectations, you're like, I don't know if this is the group for me. Um, understand that that's okay, that happens. We have created off ramps so that it's fine. We, we want this to be life-giving to you. And if it's not, let's figure out what that can look like. Um, there are some times where great people get matched with great people and it still doesn't work out. So let's make sure, don't give up on groups. Let's figure out how to get you into a group that's life-giving to you. So by now, you've been able to see what groups will be like, set up expectations, and maybe even goals by this point. Take some time now to discuss amongst yourselves your next meeting. Set up the time, the location, and what day of the week, and get excited for next week, because next week, your group gets to play. It's all about fun next week. It'll be a great time. So we will see you guys soon. Hope you have a great week.